You're listening to The Travel Tales with me, Isabella, your travel expert, where we dive into the details of my favourite destinations around the world. I am so excited to share these destinations with you, how to travel there, where to stay, and what to be sure not to miss adding to your itinerary and help you to become a travel superhero. Now more than ever, we need to be nice to each other. So why not visit the city of Nice that contains the best characteristic of its residents in its name? Nice is nice. On the Côte d'Azur, Nice is a wonderful place for relaxing, exploring and reconnecting with loved ones. Nice has a venerable and interesting history. First founded as a colony of the Greek state of Phocis in 350 BC, the city was named Nike, which was the Greek goddess of victory. Over the centuries, Nike became Nice, but unlike most other ancient cities, the first name of this glorious community is still evident in its current one. Because it's strategically located between the Alps and the Mediterranean Sea, Nice has attracted conquerors wishing to possess its beautiful coastal location. The ancient Greeks, Romans, Lombards, Lingurians, Saracens, Genovese, the Kingdom of Savoy and the French have all laid claim to the city. Today, it's the second most visited city in France, behind Paris, and it's the gateway to nearby Monaco, which is only 13 kilometres or 8 miles away. Touch down at the Nice Côte d'Azur airport and your holiday begins. The airport is conveniently close to central Nice, so the journey into the city can be made in less than 15 minutes by taxi. If you prefer taking public transport, consider the airport bus. The journey is of similar duration, though you may have to wait for the bus to fill up, but costs as little as six euros one way. Soon, a tram line, currently under construction, will connect the airport with the city, which would make the journey into town even more streamlined. Once in Nice, you'll find the city is compact, so exploring on foot is easy. Uber, taxi and public buses are all available if you're looking to travel a little further afield. Here's a pro tip. For the best views in Nice, take a cruise along the Côte d'Azur, especially right before sunset or climb to the top of Castle Hill. The Nice Observatory is also a great spot for panoramic coastal views, and is just a short bus ride away from central Nice. Art galleries, sweeping beaches, and a hilltop castle make up the picturesque backdrop of Nice. Whatever your taste, there's a little something for everyone in the city, and I've rounded up my favorite things to do in Nice. You'll likely have noticed the Promenade des Anglais on your ride in from the airport, as this sweeping expanse of pebbled beach is pretty hard to miss. Take a stroll along the four mile promenade and soak up the city and sea views. The promenade was constructed in the 1880s as a walking place for the many visiting English tourists, and that's how it was named. Explore the streets of Old Town or View Nice and you'll be transported back to 16th century kingdom of Savoy. Cafes and coffee shops line the streets and it's an excellent place for a spot of people watching. I love to enjoy the amazing views of Nice and the Côte d'Azur from Castle Hill, an 11th century military citadel, which perches high above the city. For art lovers, the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art is an impressive venue dedicated to modern artwork created by both local and international masters. Inside, you'll find over 1,300 works by over 300 artists. Do you love a good shopping spree? Then you'll love Avenue Jean Médecin. Shop till you drop down this winding thoroughfare a long street lined with big brand names and boutique stores. Another great attraction is the Opera de Nice. This beautiful neoclassical edifice has wonderful acoustics and offers opera, ballet, symphonic performances and other entertainment. You'll enjoy a performance there. And don't forget about the Simier neighbourhood. Found in northern Nice, this neighbourhood is often overlooked which means discerning travellers, like you and me, can enjoy the Roman ruins, monastery gardens and thermal baths all to ourselves.
And now a word from our sponsors, the Journey Hero Travel app. Soon, you'll be able to download the coolest new travel app available anywhere. The Journey Hero Travel app puts the power of artificial intelligence on your phone to locate fantastic deals that are tailored just for you. The best part, however, is that after you book and even pay, Journey Hero will continue to look for better deals. When it finds a better deal, it will give you the option to change and if you accept, it will refund the difference in what you paid to your credit card. How cool is that? Everyone wants an unexpected windfall. You can use the extra money for a bit of shopping on Avenue Jean Medecin. Now, back to our podcast. Cuisine in Nice is traditionally Southern French because of its Provençal roots. You can expect to enjoy dishes drizzled with olive oil and herbs, but Nice also enjoys a close proximity to Italy, which provides luscious flavours to the mix. Don't be surprised to find Italian influences on most menus. Here are my favourite places to eat in the city. Restaurant Le Chant Claire. At least one of your nights in Nice should be spent indulging in fine food, and there's no better place to do so than at Restaurant Le Chant Claire. Every dish at this restaurant has been carefully paired with one of the 15,000 bottles of wine that line the cellar. La Roustide. Enjoy French cuisine with a twist at La Roustide, a quaint restaurant with a deeply rooted love for truffles. There are six varieties of truffle used on the menu. Oliviera. Located in Nice's Old Town, Oliviera is an olive oil themed restaurant serving delicious Mediterranean dishes with a strong focus on seafood. Most meals at Oliviera begin with a complimentary olive oil tasting with the restaurant owner. Beachfront bars, rooftop bars and wine bars. What more could you want from a coastal city that knows how to party? These are my favourite night spots to see and be seen. Le Meridian. While the cocktails might be a little pricey, one drink at this iconic establishment is an absolute must while in Nice. Head to the 10th floor for spectacular views of the sea. Shapko Bar. This bar sets the tone for an evening to remember as it's one of the most animated live music bars in town. Live bands take to the stage here every night of the week and tend to play sets late into the morning. Les Distilleries Ideales. Step into this cozy venue and you'll feel like you've stepped back in time to the 18th century. This old world tavern is dark and cozy and it's the perfect place for a post-dinner martini. Nice is divided into multiple neighbourhoods, but the four most popular are the Old Town, City Centre, the Port and the Beachfront. Here are my recommendations on where to stay in the city. Hotel Suiz. Looking for an affordable boutique hotel just steps from the Old Town? Great news, Hotel Suiz is all that and more. Book a room with a view and enjoy breakfast on your own private terrace overlooking the port. Palais Saleya. If you prefer a contemporary hotel that still doesn't break the bank, consider Palais Saleya. While the hotel sits in an 18th century townhouse, its decor and amenities are purely 21st century. The self-catered apartments are particularly convenient. Boscolo Excedra. Cool off in the city at Boscolo Excedra, one of the only hotels in Nice to boast a rooftop pool with a terrace, an on-site spa and all-day dining. With a glorious 300 days of sunshine each year, gastronomy that covers two wonderful regions and an old town that dates back to the 14th century, it's no surprise that travellers from far and wide flock to the sparkling shores of Nice. Visiting Nice is nice, even with your niece. Thanks for listening to Travel Tales with me, Isabella. Before we go, please show some love by leaving us a review where you found this podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at Journey Hero App for more travel inspiration of some of my favourite destinations around the globe. You can also sign up to our newsletter from our website, www.journeyhero.net 
to receive updates when I post new blog entries or podcasts. Stay tuned for next time when we'll be heading to the literal ends of the earth in Ushuaia, Argentina.